is high frequency trading this is a very important topic nowadays because uh, especially in the us and the european market where the markets are pretty big and almost all kind of asset classes are getting traded in, in the market but strictly speaking from an indian perspective this is not going to be a very relevant topic because here markets are fully emotionally like if you look at uh, sensex if you look at uh, nifty they are fully emotional in nature and more or less they are getting traded they are highly regulated in nature in fact i will take an indemnification to mention that they are not highly regulated rather they are they are orthodoxly orthodox regulated in nature but the concepts like high frequency trading although this is not new to the majority of the markets like united states like europe like singapore like tokyo like dubai but they are the backbone of what we are today because today whatever we have it's all about technology it's all about technology that is what we have right because technology is something which is uh, you know technology is something which is very very relevant today nowadays very very relevant today nowadays now let's take a simple example let's take a simple example you know but first of all what do you mean by high frequency trading I, there is a misconception which we have in the Indian markets as far as the high frequency trading is concerned. Uh, basically, the difference between the high frequency trading and algorithmic trading is concerned. High frequency trading is nothing but a subset of algorithmic trading. Now, what is a subset of algorithmic trading is basically algo trading wherein are written algo by the quants. Quants stands for the quantitative people. Are written algo by the quants are going to be run the show. So, example, they are the one who are who are going to be the, the uh, they are the one who are going to be running the show, right? They they are the one exactly. So they are going to write the algorithms, algorithms, and that algos will determine when to trade, how to trade, how much to trade, and why not to trade. Of course, they run on the pattern analysis and they run on the momentum ignition. They run on the they run on the liquidity patterns. There are many things on which the algos are running. And currently on the machine learning using a language called Python, all these languages are uh, are getting are getting developed. But high frequency trading is one level higher than. So basically, it's a subset of algorithmic trading. In a high frequency trading, what what it does happen in a high frequency trading, you are dealing with the high you are dealing with the high speed networks. I'm not talking about uh, like a countries in India. You know, example. Suppose today, take a take a test, right? We do have a speed of 50 Mbps. Does it mean that it is a high speed network? No, it's not that. If I'm not mistaken, I was speaking with some hedge fund manager in Singapore a few years ago uh, when I was there. We keep traveling to Singapore, and from where we had uh, one of the points of the discussion was that that in a high frequency trading. The minimum speed which is required is roughly 4 Gbps, which means that per second 4 gigabytes per second, and 1 Gb is equal to roughly 1024 Mbps. So roughly 4000 Mbps, approximately more than 4000 although. So roughly 4000 Mbps speed per second. This is what it is required in case of high frequency trading. And this is somehow is impossible in the developed nation, right? Especially in the countries like India, where you will get 4 Gbps speed and that is uninterrupted. But high frequency traders are playing a very important role in multiple aspects. Unfortunately, high frequency traders are tend to be assumed as a punters. I'm not, I'm not defending that or I'm not saying that they are not punters. Exactly, they are punters because what they exactly do, they trade only for a few seconds. Example, one uh, example uh, uh, in fact by the time you by the time a person in the OTC market or ETD market decides whether he would like to go or not they will take they will be they will be in the market and they will out of the market so they trade only for sometimes a fraction of a second they sometimes trade for few seconds example three seconds four seconds five seconds and six seconds. So by the time you will pick your phone in the OTC market and you will give a call to dial to some somebody, right? By the time they already entered into market and executed and went away. Sometimes high frequency trading, just like PPP, are supported by the FCMs also, which is future clearing merchants. Example: Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, Standard Chartered, 
UBS, RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, ANZ, Westpac, NAB, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, your Bank of America, Deutsche, the list is endless. They are sometimes supported by the FCM also, as far as the leverage trading are concerned. But of course, we need to appreciate that in a high frequency trading, leverage trading is just like a double weapon, a weapon having both sides open. So it might possible that you might gain, it might possible that you might end up in a loss as well. So that is a call something which, uh, which you, which you need to take in a, which you need to take in a high frequency trading, in a high frequency trading. Now let's take a simple example here. Uh, first of all, we need to understand who all the people, those who trade in the high frequency trading. We have multiple people, those who trade in the high frequency trading example. We have individual or the propriety trading desk which are shortly known as the prop desk in the market. Now, propriety trading desks are those desks, example me, if I have some money and I wanted to create some algos, of course, we are living in 2017, whereby there are a lot of websites which we have and, and if, you, if you just open these websites, you would be able to create your own algos. Example, Q Station is there, example, IQ Broker is there and there are a lot of websites which, which we have, which is are more or less a US based websites wherein on a live basis you will you not be able to create your algo but you would be able to backtest that so this is the beautiful part of the game so example when in 1990s the world has moved from nasdaq to ecn which is electronic communication networks such kind of facilities were not there that on an online basis i not been able to create an algo but i would be able to test it i would be able to back it i would be able to back test it right now here now here is the game so these are all proprietary trading firms, right? Example as independent person or a set of independent person, they take their own money and what they exactly be doing, they are going to be uh, investing their own money and they have certain algos. It might possible they lose, it might possible they gain, nobody knows because uh, algo trading doesn't mean or high frequency trading doesn't mean that you always going to be win the show. No, that's never going to get happen. It's not always mandatory that you are always always going to win the show right sometimes you lose as well now other people are broker dealer terminals who are broker dealer terminals this must be a fancy word for you or, or for many people here actually broker dealer terminals are those platforms which are managed by the big i banks example goldman sachs uh, credit suisse ubs uh, morgan stanley you know, Bank of America, Deutsche, HSBC, they are managed by those because theoretically speaking, an iBanker, what iBanker does for a company, an iBanker, you know, what iBanker does for a company and an iBanker uh, maintains a position, they do an underwriting, sometimes they do uh, soft underwriting, sometimes they do hard underwriting and sometimes they are going to be on the safety net, right? But that doesn't mean, but that doesn't mean that they have no network. They have a big network in which they are playing, right? And that is known as broker dealer network. And broker dealer net network networks, actually it is a platform. It is not a network. This is broker dealer platform or a broker dealer network platform. In a broker dealer network platform, what exactly happened is that it is the I banker who are placing a big orders. Example, uh, you are an I banker. You just did an underwriting, uh, underwriting for uh, say, assuming that Google is launching, uh, is coming up with a FPO, assuming, which is foreign public offer, and you are an underwriter which is Morgan Stanley, and in this underwriting, in in this underwriting, uh, what you are doing that using your broker dealer terminal, you are playing a game in the Google shares because you know that Google is a wonderful company revenue wise also it's going wonderful and they have a very good platforms they have a good revenue system so what you were doing you would be creating a high frequency trading on this high frequency trading you enter into the market only for few seconds or it might possible that you enter in, into the market multiple times for few seconds so it is not that every time you will enter in, into the market for few seconds High frequency trading are, are basically high frequency traders are those people, those who enter into the market multiple times for, uh, you know, multiple times for the, uh, for a very short period of time. So by the time you will pick up the phone, they are already in the market. 
and high frequency trading is sometimes known for entering several thousand times in the market on a single day so in an over the counter market or in the exchange traded derivative market which is predominantly the two, two, two big sets of the market right they not been able to think they not been able to enter into the market 1000 or few thousand times in a day but a high frequency trader because they live only for few seconds in the market they could enter into the market for more than two for more than thousand times in a day i'm not saying that if they're entering into the more than 1000 times in a day they would always end up in a gain no they might end up in a loss as well they might end up in a loss as well that is something which we need to understand very clearly right Another is a hedge fund trading terminals, example PIMCO. With this I would like to clear a misconception about high frequency trading. The misconception about the high frequency trading is that that people tend to think that it, it, it has only having relevance with the equi as far as the equities is concerned. No. Your definition is absolutely correct but so provided we are in 1990s when the world has just saw ECNs, electronic communication networks, right? Where we started with algo trading and slowly we moved to or might be in 2005 when we just started with uh, might be in 2005 when we just started with uh, you know uh, algo tradings but now algo traders are into so many things they are in currencies they are in derivatives they are in the bond futures they are in the crude futures they are in the commodity futures they are in the energy futures in fact uh, i was speaking to an american trader and i was amazed to listen that now the high frequency traders in US they already entered into the weather derivatives also emission derivatives also so emission derivative which is carbon credit and Australia is the largest market for the carbon credit right and and uh, has, uh, high frequency traders are already entered into the emission traders also so all those people are watching this video they have to clear this misconception that the high frequency traders are only in equity no high frequency traders are everywhere crude futures currency and all that is why I stated we would like to reach this point which is a flash crash. In this point I would like to remind one thing that has happened somewhere in 2013. I am not sure how many people remember this. Swiss National Bank removed the cap on the Euro CHF. So there was a time when the Euro CHF was having a cap at 1.05. But now what Swiss National Bank did exactly they removed this cap. right? Now Swiss National Bank, when they removed this cap, I was the treasury person of the EXL, corporate treasurer for EXL. I was watching the Reuters and I suddenly saw that Euro was roughly trading at 1.16 at that point of time. In a, just a flash of a second, it has reduced to 1.12. Just a flash of a second. I was amazed at how, how did it happen. First I thought that there is something wrong in the back end. By the time I could have reacted, I could have called to a banker that exactly what did that happen. I got to know that it has further corrected to 1.14. In the evening, the news got circulated in the market whereby we got to know that the biggest traders, biggest brokers like FXCM, Citibank also have good amount of trading. It is not like that. They got a Citibank itself got a whole of 400 million dollars only in 30 seconds. So in 2013 when Europe and when Swiss National Bank removed the cap in just 30 seconds Swiss National uh, Citibank which is not a very small trader at least they got a whole of 400 million dollars in just 30 seconds which is half of the minute that couldn't be possible by OTC market because by the time the people could have reacted in the OTC market they will take some time if they could take few minutes sometimes they could take more than 10 minutes but that could only be possible provided a big high frequency trader is in the market which is supported by a FCM which is future future clearing merchant and assuming they have a 1 billion dollar of funding and FCM is pro is giving 10x leverage on this 10 billion he is putting up and he is playing a game and this is where the flash crash in one line of flash crashes in in a hedge in a high frequency trading is what exactly you look at so what you look at is actually not uh, what you look at is actually what not the scene so on the screen i was looking at the euro went down from 1.16 to 1.12 which means a decline of the four big figures right but actually it was not 1.12 it was 1.14 so even the best financial reference data providers like Reuters 
right? They, in fact, they not been able to adjust that. And I'm not saying that everything was done by the high frequency traders. I am sure that some hedge funds would have an interest in that as well. Because ultimately in a spot trading and in a currency trading segment, hedge funds play a very, very important role. They play a very, very important role because hedge funds are always contra people. If a market going that way, they're going that way. If the market going, going this way, they're going this way. Four people are of course our friends, which are PPP desk. There are many people who tend to believe that the private placement program people doing nothing. They only invest in equities. They are always ready for the arbitrage opportunity. I appreciate that they are doing, they are doing that, but how they are doing that? They are only because of, they are only, uh, yeah, they, 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 they do have arbitrage op opportunities and they have dedicated HFT desk as well, which is high frequency trading. Nowadays, there are a lot of uh, private placement plate, pri uh, private placement platforms. Those who have their own HFT trading desk, which is high frequency trading and they do trade. And we all understand that all the PPPs have supported by a good amount of FCMs. So they do have and PPPs are changing their business model as well. Because if I invest a $1 million or a $10 million or a $100 million and I'm giving a guarantee of approximately 700% return per year, which is roughly 60% per month or which is roughly 15% per week, 15% per week, seven days passed and you got one five percent of return. There are fixed income markets who are giving you not more than 9% return. That is pre-tax for the complete whole year. So one side you have a 9% return for the complete 365 days and one side you have a 720% return which you are getting only in a uh, few seconds uh, or only in one year. So and another is our favorite people which is CTAs which is Commodity Trading Advisors or they are Managed Futures. We understand that managed futures are not like PPP. They don't give such fancy returns of 720%, but they do give good return. So they are in between, they are greater than the fixed income. So a fixed income instrument might have given you say 9% pre-tax, I'm talking pre-tax, right? And could, could be 9 to 9 and half percent, or it is a capital guaranteed, they could have given you 10%. But CTAs, which is Commodity Trading Advi Advisors, they could have given you more than 10.5% but of course much lesser than PPP. So they are the, those people, those who are actually actually taking position in the market. You have prop desk, you have bankers, you have hedge funds, you have CTAs and you have PPPs. They are connecting with ECNs which is electronic communication networks. They have the supercomputers in place. They do not have a laptops or the desktops like us although they are very latest. They are of good technology, but they have a supercomputers. They have a different configurations on which they are playing because they are running high speed algos and they are doing in millisecond, which is second of a second. If I'm not mistaken, scientifically speaking, one millisecond is one by thousand times of a second. So we are making this video of 20 minutes. So think how many milliseconds we are, we are, we are making of this video. They are connecting with the high optic fibers and sometimes they are connecting with the co-locations as well. In a high frequency trading, a co-location refers to a server or a ECN which is far away. Example, a high frequency trading trader is sitting in New York and they have a co-location from Manhattan which is not very far from New York or assuming uh, you know, a high frequency trader is sits at Malaysia, KL or he is, he is having a co-location at Singapore. For example, he sits in Singapore, which is a Marina Bay Financial Center, and he do have a co-location which is nearby, which is uh, Shatton Bay, Bona Vista, and all such places. This is co-locations actually. And of course, they are connecting with the high-speed networks, which I already told you that they are connecting uh, by more than four GBBS, four gigabytes per second, which is 4,000 MBBS speed. They're not like, we say that we have very good networks which is 30 MBBS or 30 to 50 MBBS but they have good networks than us which is 4 GBBS per second. It means that a movie of 7 GB would be installed in just 2 seconds. 2 seconds on their network. What is that? So by the time you just put it and the movie will get installed. This is the beauty of the game. This completely creates something which is known as high frequency trading which is shortly known as HFT high frequency trading. 
High frequency trading, like I told you, they are now taking position in almost every kind of instrument. It is a completely a myth that they are not, they are nowhere, that they are not taking, but they, it's a completely a myth that, you know, uh, they are only interested in taking in equities. Now they are taking in currencies, equities, commodities, fixed income instrument, bank guarantee or SBLC, which is medium term notes and long term notes, zero coupon bonds and the power swap. So they are taking position everywhere. That is what the reality of the life as of now is. They do have some trading strategies. It is not that the trading strategies which we are referring is the only trading strategies they have. No, it's not like that. They do have a trading strategy uh, whereby they they uh, whereby they take a position. You know, whereby they whereby they take a position. Uh, uh, they based upon their uh, strategy like example market making. Liquidity rebate trading, statistical arbitrage, and momentum migration. I would like to stick to these two. Moment, statistical arbitrage and momentum ignition. Statistical arbitrage is always done by hedge funds. Example. Sitting today, American dollar is little depreciating in nature. It is weakening. Donald Trump when started on 8th November, the 10 year UST went to 103 as well from where it, re it retreated back to 102, 101 and now this is roughly 94.4. The 10 year UST, 10 year United States Treasury bill is roughly 2.339 something, take it flat 2.4 as of now. And uh, there is a great expectation that, that in September Federal Reserve will give another rate hike. There are many people who tend to believe that this particular hike has already been taken into consideration but I tend to disregard that hike has not been taken into consideration as yet considering a uh, drama which is going in the in the US regarding the healthcare bill and officially speak non officially speaking Donald Trump is on the weakening side of the game other side of the curve because it's little difficult for him to get his healthcare bill approved because due to due to XYZ political reasons. Now, if there is a hedge fund which we have in the market, and let's take the example of the one of the best hedge funds we have in the bond, the company which created by the best and best, which is Bill Gross. If we have the hedge fund in the market, right? In that hedge funds, what exactly a company could have done? What exactly the company could have done? Company could have taken a long position in the UST. Why long position? Because company believes that today it is 2.39% and it will go up. So when the yield would go up and in my personal belief is also that in case of the USD treasuries, the yield would go to 2.4%. That is my personal belief. If the yield would have go to 2 or 2 3.5%, of course, the, the value will fall because of course, yield and principal would have inverse relationship. If the yield would go, the value will fall. And today, if I sell my position in the market, which is at 2.39, precisely taking 2.4, and if in the next uh, one month time or by September, if the yield would have gone to to three point uh, to little higher because of the federal fund rate, then I would get a benefit of that. This is where the high frequency traders come into play. But they don't generally. This is what statistical arbitrage is all, is all about. But they don't take such big statistical arbitrage. When it comes to the high frequency traders, we also need to appreciate that they are those people who, who are even very reluctant in taking overnight position also. So in a OTC market and the ETD market, over the counter and exchange traded, people are ready to take, uh, you know, uh, overnight position, but they don't, right? They take statistical uh, arbitrage on the day when Fed will take up a call. On the day when the Fed will take up a call, they will take a position on the very same day. As far as the momentum ignition is concerned, momentum ignition is that when the market is going up, let's participate. If the market is going down, let's participate. And there are a lot of positions which we have in the market. There are a lot of times which we have in the market when we know that market is either going up or the market is either going down. right? And in, in, in currencies as well, there are a lot of positions which we have in the market, right? But there are many people who tend to believe that momentum ignition is one of the reasons of the flash crash. And I appreciate that. 
and sometimes I am not supporting uh, high frequency traders but in my personal opinion high frequency traders sometimes create unethical, unethical game also. Example, suppose Euro is trading at take the uh, current rate 1650 to 1.1652 but he could have done he could have sold euro here 1.1654 assuming 4 pips greater and he could have bought euro here there is an arbitrage which is known as delta that arbitrage is surely going to fluctuate the market at least for few seconds that is for sure and provided a, provided a hedge for, uh, provided if the high frequency trader is supported if a high frequency trader is supported by a big guy like a FCM who, who, who can leverage that person by several times it's going to be very easy I'm not going to hear for overnight right I'm not going to hear for one hour two hour three hours I'm not going to hear for intraday I'm here only because of few seconds wherein I will place the selling position at 4 bips higher than the spot and buying position 2 bips lesser than the spot that's just a game of 2 bips and provided if I'm supported by an FCM the thing would be very easily this will create a flash crash provided we have another high frequency trader on the other side of the game to whom I do not know I never met he go on the other side of the trade and assuming if, the, if, if that happened on a day when, uh, especially in the 2013, when the Swiss National Bank, all of a sudden nobody ever thought that they will come and they said, oh, oh I, I wanted to take this cap away, then this is going to create a big havoc in the market. And this create a flash crash. In my personal opinion, a one line answer. What is flash crash? Flash crash is what you see is actually not a reality. The reality is far different. In fact, the best systems of the feeders like Reuters and the Bloomberg, they've not been able to tell you. So what you see exactly is not the reality. The reality is far different. This is from our side as far as the high frequency trading are concerned. These we already explained that they are taking the high quantity. They have high cancellations. They have low spreads. Sometimes it even happens that when a high frequency trader enter into the market. So just before executing a trade, which is milliseconds, second of one thousand of a second, just before executing the trade he cancelled his, his position that is very often as far as the high frequency trading is concerned so they don't bother right so just before taking up they will cancel their position then you have arbitrage models then you have low latency latency means what exactly in the happening on the floor right the how fast this information is coming on the on the servers on the screens of high frequency high frequency trader Overall to summarize, high frequency trading is a wonderful thing, it's a wonderful invention in the foreign exchange market and I'm absolutely lucky that I bond in an era when I saw the high frequency trading, how exact it is working. It's wonderful that the countries like Singapore, Tokyo, Dubai, Hong Kong, they are very conducive to high frequency trading. Of course, if you go to US and Europe due to the past experiences, a lot of flash crashes and dark pools, we are not here talking, talking dark pools because when we will covering the ATS which is alternate, alternate trading systems or ATP alternate trading platforms then we would be covering the dark pools surely but, but as far as this uh, high frequency trading is concerned there are few countries which are wonderful like Singapore, Hong Kong, Dubai and, and Tokyo and high frequency trading will continue to flourish my only submission here is that regulation is good and regulation should be there but we should not have too much regulated in the sense like we will kill the future of the high frequency trading and this is what exactly which is happening today the future of the high frequency trading is on a downside so the last line there was a time when 45 percent of the american equities were, were traded by the high frequency traders and today this ratio has reduced to less than five percent which is not good you are killing the innovation in the market this is our submission but at the same time, we are also very happy to share that Treasury Consulting LLP is entering into the high frequency trading. And hopefully uh, in the next month, we would be able to start creating our algorithms, algorithms as well, our algos as well. 
our upcoming fixed income platform and our the revised website of Tragic Consulting LLP would be talking about uh, the algo tradings. We'll be talking about the algo tradings. In case you have any question, you're welcome to visit our website. Of course, this website is subject to change, which is www.tragicconsulting.in. Our mobile is 9899242978. My Skype ID is Rahul5327. My email is rahul.magan at the rate We would like to thank you very much.